Hey everybody, this is Tim with Let'sJamGuitar.com. I am at RNA Music in Canton, Texas, and we're here to talk to you about some guitar strings. Hi, I'm Ryan from RNA Music. <laughs> <laughs> and we're here to talk about guitar strings. Cool. Let's talk about strings. Cool. Well, uh, just kind of a quick history on guitar strings. Uh, did you know that guitar strings are actually older than guitars? Well, I, your strings have been around a whole yeah. while. I didn't know about, uh, I haven't research the dates or yeah no back in the day I think it was like a uh, oh man I want to say it was like the 13th century or something they used to use animal guts and stuff for strings yeah. right well they didn't have ye old RNA music that you could go to they had animals they had animals <laughs> they had to use what was on hand and so pretty much strings themselves were multi-instrument oh yeah so I mean whatever instrument you were playing that's what you were using yeah loose so, yeah, but the uh, six-string guitar started gaining popularity in like the 18th century, I think it was. Something like that. And uh, piano wire was the big. Oh, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, that was kind of the that was kind of the thing. And then of course uh, they moved away from gut and stuff because um, better materials were made. Guts are stinky. Innovation. Yeah. Inno yeah. Innovation. So anyway, so yeah, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, strings and stuff. Uh, Ryan, as you know, my videos are pretty much geared towards the beginning guitar player or people that are interested in, you know, mm -hmm. jumping into guitar. And I thought uh, maybe we kind of get your opinion. Um, you've been a proprietor in business now for four years. Four years. Yeah. Four years. Definitely. I've yeah. worked for uh, I've worked for other music stores who shall remain remain yeah. unnamed. <laughs> Big stores, but yeah, yeah. for my self-employed owning music store, four years now. Yeah. yeah, but a ton of musical experience behind you, and so some. Yeah, I figured you'd be the right man for the job. For the beginning guitar player, the guys that are uh, starting out on acoustic and electric guitar, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of strings do you recommend for them? I mean, well, for acoustic guitar, um, kind of an industry standard, and most guitars come from the factory with 12s. That's sort of the normal thing for acoustic guitar. And so I, I sell a lot of 12s, uh, I keep a lot of those in stock. But what I've discovered what, lately... Let me stop you there. What is a 12 exactly? Well, that's the diameter of the smallest, the first string, the okay. E string. So it's, it's 0.012 inches, millimeters. Probably millimeters. I don't know. Probably so. It wouldn't be inches. But so that's just the diameter okay. of the string. So 0 0.012, now we shorten that to... Just 12s. 12s. Still saying, I use 0.012s to 0.056s. What do you use? <laughs> now, I, so when I say 12s, that's like they generally measure strings in sets by the gauge of the smallest string. Uh, so that's what I mean by 12s, okay. just shorthand. All right. So that's a good tip for you guys who don't know that stuff yet. So generally, um, 12s are kind of what, like if you went to a guitar store somewhere and you bought a guitar off the wall, acoustic guitar, it's probably got 12s on it. For a beginner, because you know it's tough on your fingertips, mm -hmm. it takes a lot more hand strength and it's harder on your fingertips to play acoustic guitar. What I've found um, the last couple of months is 11s, which is 0 0.011 to a 0.052. Oh, there's your camera. <laughs> Wrong camera, right? These have been very, very popular because it's a bit easier on the fingertips okay. um, and a little bit less muscle strength required to fret the strings. Um, but even then, because we'll have, uh, particularly for kids, you know, because I have people take lessons like eight year olds and 10 year olds. Um, D'Addario, well, everybody else too, but D'Addario in particular, they actually make some extra light acoustic strings that are 0 .010 or 10 to 47. Um, these are great for like straight up beginners because they definitely will not tear, tear your fingers up as bad. Okay, cool. In the beginning, and you can kind of build up your tolerance and start with 10s, kind of, you know, a couple of weeks, then jump to 11s, kind of build up the strength, build up the calluses, and then maybe jump to 12s if yeah. you want to. But <clears throat> interesting about the 10s though, I, I thought that was like really light for acoustic personally. But I have a guy who came in, actually the guy who taught me to play, I took lessons from when I was a kid. And he's a bass player, so he has no fingertips. Like you couldn't fingerprint him, there's nothing there. He's been playing for 35, 40 years, right? And he comes in and asks for, hey man, I need some tins for my acoustic. And I just thought, <laughs> what? What's up, dude? Isn't that kind of light? And he's like, let me tell you something. He schooled me. 
because he knows more than I do. He's played for him. He's like, let me just say something, Ryan. If you have an acoustic gig that you have to play for three hours straight, nonstop, at the end of the gig, you're happy you had tens. I thought, makes sense. So even for guys who are you know experienced and have played for forever, depending on the kind of gig you got. <clears throat> and even though this is a beginner video, that's a pro tip. That's a great tip. Yeah. You know, so don't be ashamed if you're like, yeah. Oh, you play tens, wuss. <laughs> no, no. There are dudes who are like pros and been playing their whole lives yeah, who I'm will use tens. Yeah. In certain situations, so. Important tip, everybody. Yeah, that's good. So what yeah. about electric on the electric side? Electric guitar, uh, kind of the same thing. It's weird how things change. Like over like the last twenty years, when I was younger, learning to play guitar, like nines, which would be point zero zero nine on the package, like nine to, was it 42s? Nine to 46? Nine to 42, I was right the first time. Uh, nine to 42s, you know, back, you know, in the mid 90s, early 90s, you bought a guitar off the shelf, it came in nines. Right. Generally, that was sort of normal. Yeah. Um, nowadays, most guitars straight off the rack come with tens. So I find that to be interesting, but because, you know, 25 years ago, you would say, yeah, start with nines. Nowadays, guitars are coming with tins on them. But for beginners, it's kind of the same thing. Though electric guitar is a lot easier on your hands, like less strength involved to play electric guitar than acoustic guitar. The nines will definitely be easier, I think, for a beginner. Um, tins, you know, that's kind of, it wouldn't be bad. Yeah. Because tins on an electric would be like the lightest you would go on an acoustic. That's true. So nines or tens, I'd probably go with nines though for a beginner on electric. Let's talk about tunings, because people are using crazy tunings. Nowadays, there's people are down tuning so much, you yeah. know. And so, if that's what you're into, like if you're a beginner and you're like, hey, I want to play some, I don't know, what's a heavy band? I don't know, wait, Degent. Degent. I want to play some, <laughs> there's a lot of these bands playing seven strings, eight string guitars, or even a drop tuning, like to drop. C, drop C sharp, drop A, all kinds of stuff. You can get, I mean, they make strings for everything. They have strings that are made for the lower tuning stuff, so that's kind of something you want to yeah. factor in. Like, you don't want to play, like, drop A with tens, because they'll just be flopping in the breeze. There, there's gauges for, like, everything. I'm kind of amazed, because I'm a real big proponent of Dario. Mm -hmm. They've been a great partner for us at RE Music, and they, make like every single gauge you could ever think of. Like I've never even ordered all the different gauges they have because they just have one. There's one for every situation if you're a, like jazz guys have certain gauges they prefer, blues guys have certain gauges they prefer, rock guys have you know what they want and then the metal guys are like the thicker the, thicker the better. Yeah. How low can we go on a six string? Can we take can I get the, a seventy? Yeah, can we on take the, the six string the power lines down and put yeah. them on my guitar? Yeah. So yeah. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Uh, being kind of more of a blues guy, mm -hmm. like what kind of gauges do you like to use? I'm pretty much straight up tens. Straight up tens. Yeah. Um, it depends on the neck of the guitar, uh, how it responds. I've got a uh, uh, Stratocaster parts caster um, that I've kind of put together. I bought. It started off as a Squire. Mm -hmm. I paid fifty-two dollars on eBay for. Perfect. And um, I just have slowly upgraded and parted the guitar to become you know, what it is today. Um, but I use a hybrid 9 to 46 mm -hmm. on that guitar. And the reason I do that is because the neck, it's not as full as a normal Strat neck. It mm -hmm. seems like it's a little bit thinner. Yeah. And so the 946 is, I don't know, they just, they feel right on the neck. Yeah. We were just talking out in the shop because I had somebody coming to get some strings. And yep. Uh, I think I had like one, I had like three sets of nines, right, right nine to 42s. Yep. That's sort of normal, like you're saying nines, mm -hmm. we're talking nine to 42. Well, they had uh, nine to 44s, I think. 46. Nine to 46, no, because it was 10 to 44, that was a weird gauge too. They have the 9.5, there's um, a telephone call. Dang it! Not dang it, someone's going to buy something. Alright, any music? Phone! Yeah, so I, so you use like the nine to forty six uh, on that on that on particular strat. But every other guitar I have, I'm pretty much a straight ten. That's me. I use tens on most everything. That's like regular tuning or tuned down to E flat or even drop D or drop C sharp. Yeah. 
Anything lower than that, I'll use like a 10 to 52, which is a hybrid sort of thing where you got the much thicker lower strings. That's good for that's good for drop D also. But I don't mind having a little bit of yeah. flex for some of the little bit of drop tuning. So uh, on the strings, uh, yeah. now I noticed that there is a difference between the uh, materials that are used for electric guitar strings and acoustic guitar strings. Yeah, and even with electric guitar strings, you have various alloys. You know, there's like pro steels that you know, and there's different amounts of nickel. The most common is sort of nickel wound, mm -hmm. and then even. Um, Acoustic usually is bronze of some type, and even then, there's phosphor bronze and there's 80-20 bronze. So they have two different alloys yeah. um, within that. But yeah, definitely between electric and acoustic, you've got, you know, generally you've got nickel or some steel type of combination, or you've got bronze for the acoustic stuff. So how does that affect the tone? I mean, I think it's a sound thing, really. Most uh, acoustics, you have a warmer, earthier kind of tone in general compared to electric guitars or electric guitars are expected to be kind of bright and kind of project a lot you know yeah. so I think that's the main reason why you know nickel strings and steel strings on an acoustic it doesn't really sound like an acoustic right. anymore so um, I think it has to do well and of course with the pickups the mm -hmm. guitar pickups you know bronze strings probably don't transfer as well electrically vibration wise through right. the pickups to be reamplified. So I think that has a lot to do with it really. I think in, and I you may disagree with this. If if you do then we've got a fantastic uh, video because we can debate. <laughs> I ain't <laughs> debating. <laughs> I'm always right and no one ever agrees with me. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> oh <laughs> see. You know, I think that the probably the most important thing, especially for the beginner, is that they just experiment and that they try to find what they Think feels the best to them mm -hmm. as well as what sounds the best to them. Uh, I, I agree with that. Yeah. That makes for a terrible debate. Oh. But yeah, I think you're right. And yeah. let, me, let me say why I think you're right. And you can tell me if I'm wrong. My reasons I think you're right. I think you're right. I think you're right because you know everybody's different. We all have different yeah. size hands. We all have different amounts of hand natural hand strength, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, what feels good to this one person might not feel good at all to another person because we're all individuals, you know. So, you know, 11s on acoustic might feel great for you as a beginner, or they might feel like, oh gosh, it's barbed wire. Right. Well, then you maybe need to try 10s, yeah. you know. And there's nothing wrong with that because we are all different. Somebody's here. There's a customer. They're gonna buy orange amps. And Chapman guitars. And Chapman guitars. Who make guitars for Chapman guitars? Um, I did want to ask you: Do you recommend? Um, for new players that may want to experiment with heavier gauges, that they have them professionally installed by a, a local tech at their local music store. Or uh, like yes, I think so. Because if most guitars come, most electric guitars and acoustic guitars, you know, like we said, acoustics come strong with twelves generally, and electrics usually come with tens. That's just commonplace. Um, now, if you're maybe a little inexperienced and you want to try some of these like really low drop tunings, and you're going to go to a really thick gauge of strings. I probably would take it to a tech um, because you can put those strings on there and you may, have, you may have to adjust the height of the bridge so you don't get any string buzz. You may have to adjust the neck slightly, a slight truss rod adjustment, intonation. Um, it's a pretty good idea if you're doing like major changes. Like if you're going from nines to tens, yeah, usually. It's, yeah, very, very minor. You, you might need a little tweak there, but if you're going from like nines to 11s and standard tuning right. down to like I don't know C standard or something then you probably need to yeah, have your guitar adjusted. I would definitely recommend taking it to a tech that you trust. Well Ryan thank you so much You're for welcome. your time today. I appreciate you taking up some time to chat with my 22 subscribers. Awesome. Always a pleasure. And uh, uh, man look forward to uh, look forward to putting this thing on YouTube. And yeah me too. Yeah. Go on I'm looking forward to seeing how it gets edited. <laughs> I think what we're going to do is like uh, Tim shooting a video. I'm shooting a video. That's right. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait. I'm going to let Tim upload his first and let it go for a while, I think. And then I'll upload then you'll, mine. Because you'll probably get yours edited before I do. Maybe. Because, well, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see if we cover the same ground or not cover the same ground. And uh, in my video, 
you can link to Paching. Here's Tim's channel. I definitely recommend checking him out. He's got a lot of great advice and some great videos for beginners. Stuff that I didn't really think to cover, which is great. So you can check him out. If you're watching my video, go here to check out Tim's channel. And if you're watching my video, you can go there and check out Ryan's. How about that? Yep. And you can always go to letsjamguitar.com and uh, you know, I'll be putting a link to RNA on that as well. So Awesome. Uh, so good stuff. Well man, thanks again. Yeah, thank we you. We appreciate you. Enjoyed it. And rock on. Keep the music alive. We'll see you next time.